Matthew chapter 10. And he called to him his 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal every disease and every affliction. The names of the 12 apostles are these. First, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, the son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon, the Cananean, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. These 12 Jesus sent out, instructing them, go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel and proclaim as you go, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse lepers, cast out demons. You received without paying, give without paying. Acquire no gold, nor silver, nor copper for your belts, no bag for your money, uh, no bag for your journey, nor two tunics, nor sandals, nor a staff, for the laborer deserves his food. And whatever town or village you enter, find out who is worthy in it, and stay there until you depart. As you enter the house, greet it, and if the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. And if anyone will not receive you or listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet. When you leave that house or town, truly I tell you, it will be more bearable on the day of judgment for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah than for that uh, time. Well, uh, chapter 10 uh, of Matthew's gospel uh, is connected into uh, uh, the, the, the flow of Matthew's gospel. Uh, at the end of chapter uh, 9, uh, Jesus has prayed, has told the disciples to pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into the harvest. And here we have Jesus at sending his disciples uh, out into the harvest field. Uh, chapter 10 uh, is the second discourse in Matthew's gospel. Remember the Sermon on the Mount, chapters five to seven is the first discourse. This is the second discourse, often known as the mission discourse. Um, it's It's got two horizons, really. There's the immediate horizon of instructions that were particularly relevant to, G to Jesus' disciples as they went out on this first mission. So verse five, uh, not to go uh, to the Gentiles, just to stay among the people of Israel. But then as the, the uh, chapter goes on, the, the horizon seemed to, to broaden. And uh, later on, he talks about um, uh, the, the, uh, the disciples being delivered over uh, to governors and kings uh, for my sake, verse 18, to bear witness before them and the Gentiles. So the idea is uh, their, their witness would extend uh, beyond Israel to the Gentiles. So uh, in, in that sense, the instruction that we get here is sort of a, a broadening of uh, the Great Commission at the end of, um, of the gospel when Jesus sends out the disciples uh, and tells them to you know, evangelize the nations. Here is kind of some more concrete instructions of what uh, that will uh, look like. Uh, well, the chapter starts in the first four uh, verses with Jesus appointing the 12 that... Uh, 12 uh, is again symbolic that Jesus is um, creating a, a, a new Israel, if you like. Uh, these are all uh, uh, Jewish uh, people. So the new Israel, there's continuity. Uh, it's not as if he sort of rejected um, ethnic Israel altogether. No, the, these um, uh, Jewish followers of Jesus are the nucleus of his uh, new people. He sends them out. Uh, he tells them not to go uh, to the Gentiles or the Samaritans, uh, but go rather, verse 6, to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And again, that's a, a sort of um, tension that we're seeing in Matthew's gospel. There is this priority of ministry to Israel in the first instance, but still there's the uh, horizon that we see later in the chapter of going uh, to the Gentiles. What are they to do? They're to proclaim, verse 7, that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's the same message that John the Baptist proclaimed, and it's the same message that uh, Jesus proclaimed. So there's continuity in, um, in the mission across uh, Matthew's gospel. As well as proclaiming, they're to do what Jesus did to heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse lepers, cast out demons. And uh, it's appropriate for them to do that because that demonstrates that the kingdom of heaven is at hand, uh, that Jesus um, uh, that Jesus is here. The kingdom is uh, present with the presence of uh, Jesus. Uh, should we be doing those things? Uh, I've no doubt that uh, you know, he healing happens uh, today, um, uh, that these sort of things happen, but it's not quite uh, as integral to uh, the mission of uh, Christians today, the proclamation of the gospel. I, I think because the Lord Jesus is not physically present with us, these things will happen uh, when uh, Jesus returns. 
and these things may happen, um, but it's not quite the same in terms of the mission that we have. And you see that in uh, the rest of the New Testament, where the focus uh, now is much more to proclaiming uh, Christ as uh, as Lord. Um, uh, verse um, uh, eight and nine, uh, you know, don't take any extra uh, money uh, with you. And uh, again, that's that's a sort of localized temporary thing, because uh, in Luke 22, uh, later on in Jesus' ministry, uh, he allows them to do these things when they go on uh, mission. Uh, there's a sense in which uh, they're to reject those who reject them uh, by not letting their peace remain on, on the house. And uh, this warning that Jesus gives in verse 15, truly, I tell you, be more bearable on the day of judgment for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah than for that time. As bad as Sodom and Gomorrah uh, was in Genesis, to reject Jesus, uh, to reject his uh, missionaries that that is uh, that is the greatest sin and uh, it's um, it's striking that that is um, uh, that 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 Jesus puts that as uh, as the greatest uh, sin that idea of being more bearable on the day of judgment that's something he's going to come back to in chapter 11 and will uh, Lord willing think of it uh, then then uh, 16 to 24 we've got the further horizon uh, as Jesus talks about the promise of the spirit um, verse 20, when they're uh, uh, brought before governors, it'll be the spirit of your father speaking through you. But he also, that's the positive side. He speaks of rejection and uh, division. Um, and um, verse 24, a disciple is not above his teacher or a servant above his master. If they um, have called the master of the house, Jesus, uh, Beelzebub, uh, how much more will they malign those of the household? So Jesus is kind of reassuring the disciples in the future that the, the spirit will be with you. He will enable you to speak, uh, but you, you need to be prepared that you will be um, uh, you will be persecuted. Uh, you will be mocked and insulted. And the rest of the chapter, I guess, is is more motivation for that uh, that mission. Uh, the first um, being in twenty six to thirty three, um, a, a warning against fearing uh, man, uh, because ultimately, what can man do to you? He can. Uh, verse 28, uh, can kill the, the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, uh, the person to fear is uh, God, who can kill both body and soul uh, in hell. Uh, but as uh, Christian believers in God, uh, we could be confident because uh, God knows uh, the very hairs of our head uh, are numbered. He knows us intimately, and he will uh, care for us. Uh, but that means acknowledging uh, God, uh, sorry, acknowledging Jesus before men, uh, verse uh, 32 is uh, critical because if we do that, then he'll acknowledge us before his father. But if we deny uh, Jesus before men, well, he will deny us before his father in heaven. So again, the motivation to mission, yes, uh, it will be difficult. There will be persecution. People will oppose us, but you need to keep uh, proclaiming Christ uh, because on the last day, uh, if you are faithful to Christ in proclaiming him, he will be faithful in a sense to you and uh, will acknowledge you before the father. Uh, then uh, 34 uh, to 39, again, a division and the priority of a relationship with Jesus, even above family. Again, um, we, we don't read this in an absolute sense. Matthew 15 will say, um, uh, you know, you've got to honor your mother and father. But when it comes to relationship with Jesus uh, in opposition to relationship with um, family, it, it's got to be a relationship with Jesus that uh, that trumps it. And then the, the last uh, paragraph uh, of the chapter uh, on uh, the reward for those who receive. It's, it's uh, fascinating. This, this sort of moves beyond uh, the work of the, uh, the, the missionaries sent out, but to those who receive them. And this wonderful promise, whoever receives you, uh, missionaries, receives me. Uh, that's all we have to do is just to receive them, receive their message. And that means receiving uh, God. And... Um, Again, this idea of receiving, um, end of verse 41, if you receive a righteous person because he's a righteous person, you'll receive the righteous person's reward. It's not that you've done anything to be righteous, but you'll receive uh, the righteous person's reward. And, and what does that mean? It means giving a cup uh, of, of water to a disciple. So here I think is the idea of uh, it's faith. It's receiving the message 
uh, and uh, you'll get the reward, uh, even though you've uh, you've done nothing. And ultimately, we see that in, uh, in in the work of Jesus, we receive Him, and we receive His reward. Let's pray. Our Father, we thank you for uh, this chapter and the encouragements and the warning, but also this wonderful picture that we receive the message of the Lord Jesus, and we receive uh, the heavenly reward. And we thank and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.